Grand Rising citizens, this is the Neo Tokyo News Broadcast. Is Blur.io really bad for the crypto space? Trump NFTs take the number one spot. Yuga Lab appoints a heavyweight CEO. Polygon partners with Mastercard and Coco's Guide to FUD or Facts. This is your weekly recap for all your crypto, gaming, metaverse and NFT affairs live from the heart of the Citadel and here's what's making news. Greetings everybody and welcome to file number 29 of the Neo Tokyo News Broadcast. I am your host, Outer Citizen Shamsi number 769, bringing you the news powered by the Neo Tokyo News Team. Music brought to you by the team at Music Mainnet and video production brought to you by none other than Bad Future. If you enjoy our content and if you like what we do, please follow us on Twitter at Neo Tokyo News. All right, we hope everybody had a great Christmas with a lot of food comas, but now I'm going to fill your appetite for some crypto news. So, Coco believes that it is more important than ever to be able to differentiate between FUD tactics and genuine critique. FUD is a manipulative tool often used to sway investors in a particular direction, while legitimate criticism is valuable and needs to be separated from the pile of FUD to be actively consumed. Some tips to verify whether something is FUD or fact is to verify if it comes from a reliable source, what is the agenda behind the claims. These tips are adopted by a go-to research powerhouse called NGMI Lab, where their comprehensive analysis leaves no stone unturned with a simple aim to provide impartial research for their members. All that and some transparency about how they do it deserves some brownie points for sure. So, now that you know that information, here's a training exercise on FUD or critique for you. Flower83 wants to see if Blur.io is really bad for the crypto space. Now, OpenSea has been in pole position since the dawn of time, but has been notorious for bad customer service, constant outages, questionable policy regarding stolen assets, poor security, and a few bugs. Although they have improved on most of these aspects after being under attack by a lot of users, people started to wonder if there were better alternatives. A lot of attempts at making marketplaces took place and after seeds of a similar nature were sown and projects like LooksRare and X2Y2 or even the latest Gigamart came along, we now have Blur.io who started their journey by pulling a 4x on the amount of volume done by OpenSea. Blur seems to have some key features attracting most in the shape of zero fees, an upcoming airdrop, NFT tools on the site, and an optimized sweeping mechanism to name a few. So, with that in mind, Flower thinks that Blur is not only catered towards DGENs and flippers, but serious NFT investors as well, but the one issue is regarding trading fees. Now, you can just put a blank, unapologetic, fat 0% across it all and pay no regard to the artist or founder of the collection. It even shows you how much you pay on looks rare and OpenSea. So, why would creators want their projects on Blur.io if they know there's an option to not even receive any royalties? There's more on the topic and some other sketchy things Flower has picked up on, so rather than me telling his story about Blur, I'll tell you about NFT Tuesday and let you read the article in the description instead. So, the weekly NFT recap from Flower83 tells us that the number one collection for this week was Trump Digital Trading Cards with a 7-day volume of nearly 6,800 Ethereum and Valhalla and Bode Yacht Club being second and third respectively. And then, some props to Oldius Origins, a project created by some steady stack holders and NT citizens with Felix Norden as the lead dev. The project hit the top 10 on OpenSea, so congratulations to them on achieving that alongside a 3x their initial investment from Mint. Some other news being that the third hand of the Citadel is now up for sale for 130 Ethereum and 14 apes worth more than $1 million were stolen in the week. Speaking of Ape, there's some news from the community that is making headlines and breaking necks and Phoenix Down will tell you more about it after this intermission. Alright, we are feeling festive and we like to give back. That is why we are giving you news day in and day out and in return we ask for nothing more but your support in the form of donations if you feel we are worthy of it. Now some of our community members have been helping us out by donating ENS domains so shout out to the king of threads on Twitter, you know who you are. With that being said, thank you everybody for listening to Neo Tokyo News' broadcast and reading our articles at Neo Tokyo News, listening to our spaces and being engaged with the community as a whole. We love serving you and will continue to do so day in and day out. If you appreciate our efforts and want to support the Neo Tokyo News team, 
ntnews.eth is your place to go. That's ntnews.eth. Thank you, and let's get back to the show. Web3 giant Yuga Labs announced that Activision Blizzard COO Daniel Allegre will be joining them as their new CEO to replace Nicole Muniz. Hope I didn't butcher both those names. This move is a signal to the world that Yuga is going all out and not stopping their hype train anytime soon. The founder Gargamel mentioned that Allegre is a seasoned visionary executive who shares their passion for innovation and creativity. He also added that Dan brings valuable experience across entertainment, e-commerce and global strategy strategic partnerships, all of which are critical aspects of an immersive Web3 world built by creators for creators. Maybe Dan knows a thing or two more than Yuga about gas fees, so their upcoming mints will no longer break the Ethereum network like the other side did. I'm only joking. Anyways, this news has certainly got attention from both Web2 and Web3 since Yuga is arguably the most famous NFT community in the mainstream world. Now, let's see where Yuga takes this blockchain game and how they can use their influence to bring our culture further for the masses to see and enjoy. And before we leave you, we're going to leave you with one final story to leave you with before we leave you for good. Phoenix Down is telling us about Polygon partnering with MasterGuard. So, Polygon has been dominating headlines lately as much as the three-letter enemy who shall not be named. Polygon and partnerships are no strangers as we've known in the past with one of the notable ones being with Starbucks. They have now upped the levels and partnered with MasterCard and the Neobank app called Hi. The trio has joined forces to introduce a platform allowing users to create a bespoke Web3-centric NFT debit card. Holders of this card will be able to spend both crypto and fiat at over 90 million retailers worldwide, with the added kicker of having the ability to mint any personal image of their own as the NFT to act as the front-face image of the card itself. I'm not gonna lie, this is some 2014 fidget spinner type market tactics, but I'm low-key with it. So, the NFT Debit MasterCard will be available in four tiers, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. To learn more about how you can participate in the staking APYs and multiple cashback opportunities, check the article linked right below the like button. And that is all for this week's show, everybody. My name is Crypto Shamsi. We have music production brought to you by Music Mainnet and video production brought to you by Bad Future. We hope you enjoyed this broadcast and look forward to serving you day in and day out. And until next time, data streams connecting our minds, tying Neo Tokyo together.